Okay, uh, coming to stage right now, our very first comic. Uh, you've probably seen him at family reunions, uh, Christmas parties. <laughs> Some of you may know him as Uncle Art. Big round applause for Art Valenzuela! Someone, I think somebody left their hat there. I don't know what's up with that. Hey, what's going on? My name is Art Valenzuela, and uh, I'm Mexican. I don't know if you could tell that, but I am Mexican. And that wasn't easy to say when I was growing up. Because growing up, it was kind of like a negative connotation. It was like a stigma. It was like the M word in my house. Seriously, it was tough. My, uh, my mom and dad, I was divorced when, I wasn't divorced. They were divorced when I was about five years old. I got divorced way later. Um, <laughs> but but uh, they, they were divorced when I was about five years old. And whenever I was with my mom, she made it very clear that we weren't Mexican. But you have to understand, we lived about three exits from Mexico, okay? And um, <laughs> seriously, I called it North Mexico. It was right there. I mean, it was <laughs> San Isidro, okay? And, and, we, and she said we weren't Mexican. She said, mijo, you're going to go. <laughs> she would say, mijo, sit down in the chair right here. Sit down in the chair. <laughs> she would say chair. I, I didn't get it because she could say chair. The reason I know that she could say chair because when I would come over with my friends, and I wouldn't like give them some of what I was eating or what I was playing with. She would say, mijo, you have to chair with your friends, okay? <laughs> so I knew, I knew that she knew how to say it, like swap it out. But she said, mijo, sit in the chair and let me tell you, you're about to go visit your, your dad and he's gonna tell you that my family is Mexican, but you don't let him tell you that. You tell him that we're Spanish, okay? We're Spanish. Okay, Ma, all right, here, right, we're Spanish living in North Mexico. It's cool. Um, and then I'd go visit my dad, and my dad he lived up here in this area here, and he would make it very clear to me, and again, same, same line, mijo, uh, <laughs> uh, understand that on our side of the family, you're not Mexican, okay? That's your mom. Your mom is Mexican, but not my side. We're half German and half American Indian. And I'm like... Okay, I don't like the German part that much, but the American Indian is really cool. <laughs> I knew about World War II, come on. And so, uh, but I, I, knew about, I, knew, I knew about American Indians because I watched Lone Ranger, right? And Tonto was cool. <laughs> so I would go back home after spending a few days with my dad and tell all my friends I'm American Indian. They'd say, oh, that's awesome, what tribe? I, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> so I'd go back to my dad and say, dad, what tribe are we? And he'd say, Who's asking you that? Is that your Mexican family to asking you that? You tell them we're Californian Indians. I'm like, Dad, is that a thing? Really? <laughs> California? I can't go tell my friends I'm Californian Indian. It's weird. I love everything about being Mexican. I love lowriders. I've never owned one, never been in one. I just like looking at them. Uh, I, like, I like the fashion. Isn't the fashion really cool? It's like, it probably started like when Fruit of the Loom started, because as soon as that company started, we started wearing like white t-shirts and khaki pants and, and if you really want to get all dressed up, wear a Pendleton, a plaid shirt, go to a wedding, go to a funeral. I, the fashion's awesome. And it's Spanglish. Spanglish is amazing. Think about Spanglish. If your primary language is Spanish, you could just get away with talking to someone who mostly speaks English, say everything in Spanish, and just add a word of English. Let me give you an example. Tenemos que ir al tienda bien rápido, okay? Tenemos que ir muy rápido, so get, Venos, todos vamos juntos, métete en el car right now, okay? So all you hear is car right now and you just get in the car. <laughs> so all you gotta do, Spanglish is awesome. If English is your primary language, just flip it around, right? So just say, hey, we all got it. let's all get together, we gotta get to the store as fast as we can. So hurry up, let's all get in the carro, and you really wanna impress them that you know Spanish, get in the carro, andale, okay? And then you got it. <laughs> Everybody's in. Spanish is cool. <laughs> so, but what else about being Mexican is amazing? Our, our food. Don't we have the best food around? Come on. Yeah. You guys like our food? Our dancing? Come on. Bachata, salsa, cum. It all looks the same, but it's cool, right? It's all good stuff. So. Uh, um, what else is cool about being Mexican? Oh, our superfood. Now, I know you white people, you talk about your kale, and you talk about uh, your acai or acai berry, whatever you want to call it. That's your superfood, but we got our superfood. It's tequila. Woo! 
It's all about the tequila, baby. Now, tequila's cool, okay? Now, I know some of you probably drink ginkgo, biloba, whatever it's called, <laughs> to, to help you remember. But really what you want to do is forget shit, okay? So drink about four shots of tequila. That's super food, all right? I got, I, got, I got divorced back in 2006, so I was out on the prowl, okay? Right away, I was out on the prowl. And somebody told me about oysters. Someone said, oysters are an aphrodisiac. So I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> so every date I went on, I, I was like, okay, oysters and tequila, right? Come on. <laughs> That's cool. I give you do oysters and tequila, because tequila makes her clothes fall off. That's what the country song says. So... <clears throat> So I'm going on this day, I'm going on these days and I'm ordering like tons of oysters and shots of tequila. And I'm like, okay, okay, do I look more like George Lopez or Mario Lopez right now? <laughs> and she's like, she's like, you're funny. Uh, you look like George Lopez. I go, more shots, more, more of that oyster, that oyster thing, need more of that. And she gets so drunk and so full, like, okay, you look like Mario, let's go, check. Needed to get some or something, man. Come on. <laughs> so I got remarried. And uh, let me just start off by saying to every guy in here, when we marry, we marry like so far up above our pay grade. Come on, right, guys? Are we right? Am I right? Yeah, exactly. Come on. And I did that. I mean, look at her. She's in the audience. Where are you, Sonny? Sonny, look at her. She's beautiful. She's smiling. She's videotaping me. I'm not sure what she's doing there. Or she's on Facebook. I don't know. Um, <laughs> she's amazing. I mean, I'm so, I mean, Empire State Building up. Just so far up there. But let me just talk about this for a second. It's, it's marriage. And it was my second marriage. I did that twice. Think back with me. Think back in your own life. What have you done once that you thought, I'll, I'll never do that again. I'll never do that again. <laughs> I remember getting punched in the face one time. Honestly, I got punched in the face when I was like second or third grade. Big, tall, black dude just came and just wailed. I don't even know what I did. He just wailed on me. And I remember the impact. I remember the pain. And I remember waking up thinking, I never want that to happen again. <laughs> Ever, ever, ever. And so from that point forward, I, I ducked, <laughs> right? <laughs> I avoided stuff. I avoided fights. I didn't want to do that again. And I had food poisoning once. I never want food poisoning again. I went to jail once. I never want, I was Mex I'm Mexican, come on. Uh, <laughs> I've done these things before. I never wanted to do it again. But marriage, they said, what the hell? Let's do this again. <laughs> She's amazing, though. Again, it's not about her. It's just the institution of it. But, you know, Betty Ford is an institution. And <laughs> <laughs> the con this is called the concept of marriage, okay? The concept of marriage. And it's just that whole concept of you're no longer, you know, <laughs> your own person. You have to focus on somebody else. You have to put them first, right? And it's that whole thing. And it didn't work out too well with me the first time around. And... So I did that again, but you know, we started dating and uh, pretty soon we started learning more about each other. And I found out, you know, I'm a Leo, okay? I'm a Leo. Anybody know about Leos? Any Leos in here? I'm a Leo, I'm a lover, all right? That's, that's me, all right? And, and Leos have long manes, not me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but figuratively, you're supposed to stroke me, okay? So uh, she is a Gemini. She told me she's a Gemini. Anybody know about Geminis? Raise, no, no Geminis here? Okay, a couple Geminis. It's like two of you. Okay, good. <laughs> Geminis are twins. They're not, like, they're not like the Olsen twins. Remember, they're like cute little, <laughs> I'm here to make your day happy twins. No, they're like yin and yang. They're like good and evil twins. And so me and my quick wittedness, I'm like, so when's Stormy going to come out, Sonny? I haven't met Stormy yet. <laughs> <laughs> and she gave me that wry, funny look, like, you're, you're going to meet her someday. You're going to meet her. <laughs> but we kept going, we kept going, we got, we, got, we got engaged, and then we got married. And one of the things, some of you know me, some of you don't, but one of the things about me, people tell me I'm a workaholic. I work a lot. And, and so one of the ways that I get through working so many, so much, is I have these, what I call, free days. So uh, let, me, let me just set this up to you. A free day for me is I wake up and I don't shower. All right, that's, that's first of all, that's first, that's cool right there. 
I just eat whatever I want to eat, and I watch TV all day, and I just decompress, and I just, no brainer, that's a free day. That's how I, that's how I get through it. I do them once every couple months, okay? <laughs> so we, I think we talked about it, but I really didn't make it myself clear. I got up <laughs> early one morning, and I decided I'm going to have a free day today, but I didn't consult with Sonny. <laughs> So, so I'm, uh, I'm having a good, you know, five o'clock in the morning to around nine, having my own little free day. And she gets up and she starts to, you know, kind of enjoy it, I thought. And she's, she's a little restless and kind of trying to snuggle with me and like wondering what's going to go on, what are we going to do today? And then all of a sudden, like out of, out of nowhere, this, this voice I've never heard before. <laughs> Are you going to watch TV all day long? <laughs> so so I, I slowly reached over to the remote control, and I clicked it off, and I introduced myself to Stormy. <laughs> I had finally met Stormy. <laughs> oh, yeah, Stormy. She comes out once in a while. Uh, those of you that know my wife, you know she has this thing about always being sunny and OC as her little marketing uh, campaign. It's, it's mostly sunny in OC, okay? <laughs> we need to change that up just a little bit. It's mostly sunny in OC. Uh, <laughs> so I get married in 2014. And in 2015, I turn 50. How many 50-year-olds do we have out there? 50. <laughs> Middle age, isn't that awesome? Middle age, that's optimistic. <laughs> you know, yeah, you're halfway there, okay. Go home, look at somebody that's 50, 51, 52, and you're probably thinking, ah, three quarter age maybe. <laughs> I think I hit middle age about 15 years ago, honestly. <laughs> Uh, so you, what do you do when you turn 50? You go to the doctor, right? You go to the doctor. And this particular doctor, he was really cool. He said, uh, you're here for your 50,000 mile checkup, huh? <laughs> all, all, all cute. Uh, I've stolen that joke a bunch of times now, so apparently it was kind of funny, but at that time it wasn't that funny. And he's poking and prodding and bending me over and putting machines in me and telling me to open this and close that and all this different stuff is happening and and finally he walks away and comes back you know how they do 10 or 15 minutes later sits down on his little stool and says okay um you're basically healthy you're basically okay but one of the things i want to tell you is you are morbidly obese Oh, that's great. See, I worked my whole life to be just fat. Just, just, just chunky. Just okay. But now I'm morbidly obese. I can still fit in the roller coaster. How can I be morbidly obese? I got depressed. I went home and I said, wifey, because that's what I call her when I'm depressed. I, wifey, wifey, I, I'm morbidly obese. The doctor says we got to go on weight. I got to go on Weight Watchers and lose weight. And she was having one of her sunny days. So she's like, oh, I like Weight Watchers. I've done Weight Watchers before. Let's do Weight Watchers together. She went online and she signed us up for Weight Watchers. And three months later, we've lost combined 60 pounds together. <laughs> It's exciting, right? <laughs> it's exciting, but you know what? I've lost weight before, and I remember the last times I've lost weight before turning 50, I actually felt better, <laughs> and this time I wasn't really feeling better. I'd get up to go walk or run or, you know, something, and, and nothing was happening. I wasn't feeling that good, and uh, it just happened this week. Honest to God, just this week, Wednesday night, I was having chest pains, okay? It's having chest, don't get worried. Uh, I'm okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, chest pains. And long story short, my wife and I looked at us, okay, we should go to the emergency, okay? We went to the emergency room, and again, just, just, so, just to ease all your mind, they did all the, they did all the pro poking and prodding and rechecking and doing all that stuff, and by the time they were done, they said, okay, you're cool, you're just fat. And, and so, um, <laughs> So I'm basically healthy. I just they just told me what I needed to work on and nothing's wrong with this stuff up here Nothing's wrong with the heart. Everything's cool there. So that's really good news. I'm excited about that But one thing happened uh, uh, During that visit that I got to tell you I got to share with you um, We were sitting there in the emergency room and I was I was on the uh, I'm gonna put this down here for a second. I was on the the, the little bed there 
and they had put the hospital, the hospital gown on me, and I was still wearing my jeans, still wearing my own shoes, so from the waist up, I'm hospital clothes, and the waist down, I'm wearing my own stuff, and I'm laying on the bed, and I, I need to go to the bathroom. I need to go pee, okay? I need to go pee pee. And I, so I asked, can I, can I please go pee? And they said, yeah, sure. So they walked away, and they came back, and they said, no, you can't go pee. Um, but you can go pee in this thing, okay? <laughs> So they gave me this thing. Anybody ever seen one of these before? This is called, they call this a urinal, okay? <laughs> so this is really awesome, right? So use this. So I'm, I'm sitting, I'm sitting on the bed, okay, <laughs> with the urinal. And even though I've lost a lot of weight, the stomach is still kind of getting in the way. <laughs> and, and I'm... <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying, I'm trying to make this thing work. And, and it's constricted and it's not, you know when guys, come on, you know when you have that good, good flow and it's like a relief, you're like, oh, I couldn't get that. It was just like dripping slowly, slowly out. And, 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 then, uh, and then all of a sudden while I'm in the middle of this ordeal, I hear a voice, because they had closed the curtain right there. I heard a voice on the other side of the curtain say, hello. And I'm like, hello? <laughs> hello? <laughs> and, and I'm like, I, I'm looking at my wife, and I'm trying to finish this. And all of a sudden, the, the curtain just rolls back. And I, I see this Latina administrator just st staring at me. She must have been an administrator. She was wearing a suit. She was carrying a clipboard. And she just looked at me. And I looked at her. And she looked at me. And I looked at my wife. And I looked back at her. And then she just closed the curtain and, and took off. And I looked at my wife. And I said, honey, do you think she was Mexican or Spanish? <laughs> I'm on Valenzuela. I'm Sonny's Mexican. You'll see me again because I'm related to most of you. All right, Valenzuela, man. Good job. Let him feel the love. Wow.